Oh. Hey. Bingo. Bingo. Let's, uh, let's focus in on some faces here. Alex. Yeah? That's a little washed out. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Morning. We're getting fixed up here. All right. We are going to um, get started here in a few, letting some people get live, um, tune in, and um, it is 9.01, so we let everybody know it was going to be 9 a.m. this morning. Um, I think some people might be sleeping in because of the snowy weather. Yeah. Um, still coming down out there. Your uh, weather update from downtown is it's snowing. And, uh, it is coming down. We checked Ray's weather before we started. We were checking it out, and we have quite a bit more snow on the way. Yay! Today. First snow of the season. If you don't know by now, which I hope you do, school is closed. Um, all Metro County schools and Mayland are closed. You know what's not closed? What is not closed is Burleson Plumbing. That's right. We're here. We are here all day long <laughs> there is free coffee hot on the pot um the doors are open we've got some handsome young lads at the counter waiting to help everyone um thank you lovely wife brooke for all the hearts yes keep the love coming that's fantastic <laughs> so uh mr sean gillespie <clears throat> and brandon burleson and colton wise are hanging out at the counter. Colton's our new guy. The new guy, Colton. Most of you have not met Colton. Um, super handsome, tall guy. Slender. And I am sad to say for you single ladies, he's taken. He is we got an ladies. update this morning on that. We didn't want to stick our foots in our mouth. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, the phones are on if you guys do need any service work today um frozen pipes probably aren't an issue at the moment um but they could be later um but we we have full workforce today uh you can come in at the counter and check things out you can uh call us if you need us for anything we're here yes sir. um okay i think that's enough time of people tuning in right now we will um jump into a few things Right off the bat, I do want to mention, for those of you who are new to what we are trying to do, um, we are doing this morning show uh, because we always get questions that keep repeating themselves over and over again here at the counter. Mm -hmm. Ryan knows, I know, um, everybody else knows that homeowners want to know more about their homes. Um, the biggest investment you make, and I use this same um, analogy yesterday, but you go and buy a phone, which is only a couple hundred dollars, maybe up to eight hundred thousand dollars. If and, you're an Apple fan, yeah, if you're an Apple fan, and you get a <clears throat> owner's manual, it tells you everything you need to know on how to work that phone, maintenance that phone, whatever there is to know about it. Yeah. You get a car, uh, same thing. You spend thousands of dollars. They give you an owner's manual, and you know how to fix things, how to what lights mean when they come on. All these homeowners do not. They don't have an owner's manual for your home. We are posting these videos, doing a morning show. So A, we can answer common questions. B, you can ask questions to us um, based off what you saw in the video and we can get those questions answered for you on a personal level. So what we're doing today, we've got five awesome questions that were submitted wow. all on kind of the same topics. We're gonna stay within the same topic on these videos. Um, that way, if you go back and reference, you know what we're talking about. Yeah. So we're going to dig into those um, here shortly, but we did want to kind of highlight something we're doing right now before Christmas, before we dig into those. Um, if you didn't get one of these in the mail, you uh, this is our Christmas sales sheet. So if you're still like holiday shopping, uh, there's a lot of flashlights, knives, case knives on sale. Uh, we've got um, these wonderful... Bev Bevanda, Bevanda is what we call them. <laughs> um, that's the brand we're carrying because it is a lot more affordable than some of the other things you might have seen. Um, it is just a big canteen, 25 ounces to hold whatever you want it to hold. Um, we've got that. We've got some propane cylinders. We've got 
uh, extension cords for your Christmas lights on sale, uh, fire aid for um, fire suppressant, which is always handy to have around the house just in case an emergency, uh, some light switch, and Ryan is going to highlight one of the items that are on sale that you may not know about because we just started carrying it. So our featured product for today is this delightful little light from Nevo. It's called the Poppy. The Poppy. And the reason why they call it the Poppy is because of this. Fantastic. Amazing. Look mm. at that. It's a wonderful little flashlight that can also do this number. And Adam was just showing me if you hold this down, it actually dims. dims. Comes back up. So, coincidentally, Poppy is Kenny Burleson, my dad's name from the grandkids. So, if you want to get Kenny a, a Christmas present, I would give him the Poppy. It'll go right along with the name. But uh, this is on sale for $13.99. It's normally closer to the $20 range, I believe. Um, it's a nice rubber case. Uh, we got 300 lumen lantern and 120 lumen spotlight. We just wanted to show you guys that, let you know it is on sale by Poppy. Multiple colors as well, not just yellow. Yeah, black or yellow. Yeah. Appalachian colors, as you can tell in the background. Um, okay, I think we'll dig into some questions. You ready? Yep. And first, I'm going to give a disclaimer, which we talked about yesterday, just to make sure everybody knows um, risk involved in answering some of these questions. So everything we suggest and recommend are simply that. We want everyone to be educated on how things work, but not how to work on technical things. We always recommend hiring a licensed service professional where risk is involved. Um, Burleson Plumbing and Heating and its employees are not responsible for injury, damages, or loss related to you or your property or home. Um, now that that's out of the way, you guys know there is some risk, especially when talking about faucets, which Ryan will be digging into, um, freezing and uh, heat tape. Question number one. Here we go. It's a good question from Doug. Um, Doug asks, which brand faucets are best? Ryan works in our kitchen and bath showroom and probably is the best equipped to answer that question. All right. Um, so to answer your question, Doug, uh, of course, that is a matter of opinion. And I think if you asked um, you know, several different people, you'd probably get different answers. In terms of uh, Burleson Plumbing and Heating, and even myself, I've found that um, quality is definitely important when it comes to a faucet. You know, a faucet, whether it's a lavatory faucet or a kitchen faucet, um, are some of the most used devices that we have in our home. Um, we're continually using them. I can't tell you how many times throughout the day you go to wash your hands, uh, you you're washing dishes, you're actuating that faucet. So quality is really important. Um, we've found uh, through years of relationship that Delta faucets um, have a great quality and they stand behind their products very well as well. We also deal with Kohler and Kohler the same is a very reputable company. Um, they have existed for a long time and make quality products. and. So for us, we primarily are a Delta and Kohler house, um, and those are the directions that we lean towards. I'm a huge fan of Delta faucets. I've sold them for a long time. Uh, I like the fact that you can readily get repair parts, because inevitably, no matter what faucet it is, you're going to run into a situation where you need to get uh, a repair part for it. Um, and it shouldn't be one of those things where you just have to go and tear out your faucet and replace it with a new one when something goes bad. And if a lot of times with cheaper, um, less expensive faucets, that's the case. The parts are very hard to find or don't even exist. They're literally throwaway faucets. Um, so in my opinion, to answer your question, Doug, I would say that uh, to stick with, with a, a mainline manufacturer, uh, somebody like Delta or Kohler, um, we, we also house a brand that's kind of a proprietary brand called Luxart. Um, we've had very good success with them as well and uh, would stand behind that choice uh, if, if you wanted to go that route. So um, that would be my answer to the question. In my opinion, 
Um, I would probably, if it was me for my house, um, I would go with something I know that I can get parts for, something that I know has good customer service um, and that they'll back you up throughout the lifetime of that faucet. Um, another brand we carry, tell us a little bit <clears throat> about Peerless because it is one of our more popular sellers for the reason that it is the most affordable. So touch yeah, on that. Um, Peerless is uh, owned by the same company that Delta is owned by. They're owned by a massive conglomerate. Um, and so Peerless, in terms of price point, uh, is a great option. Um, and I do want to clarify, Peerless, uh, you can walk in Walmart and find a Peerless faucet. The only difference is, is Peerless specifically manufactures those faucets for Walmart. Um, so in order to meet some of their demands in terms of price point, uh, they will change things a touch in order to achieve a certain price point. That's a um, really good way of saying it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, our faucets, though we carry Peerless and they carry Peerless, um, are going to be different. They're sourced uh, differently to us than, than they are sourced to you know some someone like Walmart. Um, and so we try to keep uh, Peerless as, as an, an economical option for folks. They have a, a good variety of uh, choices and finishes and things like that. And um, with so far in our relationship with them, uh, they've, they've been a really good economical option. Um, so that's always a good choice as well. Perfect. Um, so on that same um, topic, we'll stay kind of um, on that point. Keith, who uh, asked a really good question about, this is actually a specific question, the, the faucet we are giving away, um, which I'll touch on that after we finish the questions on the giveaways. Um, I think people are interested in get receiving free stuff, but he wants to know the faucet that we have on our Facebook page that we're giving away, is it easy to install? So what I'd like for you to do for him, Ryan, is, is to talk about that faucet specifically, but then cut some of the options of um, how easy are other faucets to install versus uh, the brands that we just talked about. Yeah. Um, I, you know, like with anything, as time goes on, um, the development of technology to simplify things exists in a lot of formats, and that applies to faucets as well. And so um, today, most faucets out of the box, the way that they're designed and engineered to be installed, um, from our perspective, is is has gotten easier. Um, the problem that you face, and, and people don't necessarily always understand, is in an existing uh, situation where um, you're replacing a kitchen faucet or you're replacing a lavatory faucet. Your countertop is in place, your sink is in place, um, and the faucet typically exists behind or deep set on the countertop behind the sink. And so that creates a problem, especially uh, for somebody that uh, is like myself, a little bit broader, you have to actually get underneath that cabinet or inside of the cabinet in order to be able to get to uh, the pieces that secure the faucet to the deck. And so um, that's where the fun happens is yeah. trying to get and wiggle in there and you're on your back and positioned awkwardly. Um, and so if you don't have the right tools and you definitely don't have the experience, it can be very frustrating um, to to loosen up your old faucet and then try to mount your new faucet. And there are special tools for that. Um, and there, you know, there are uh, ways of saving yourself time and frustration. And that comes along with just, you know, experience. Um, but all in all, a faucet is not extremely difficult to install. And the one that we're giving away is, is not difficult. It, it really comes down to, um, are, are you okay with putting yourself in an awkward position inside of your kitchen cabinet and do you have the tools necessary um, to help with that job. One of those tools is called a basin wrench and it uh, allows you to, it has an extension on it with kind of like a little claw looking hook at the top and it allows you to get up behind the sink and, and grab onto the nuts that tighten the faucet to the deck. And so that, that tool is very instrumental, uh, both in kitchen and lavatory installations that are pre-existing. 
um, and we sell those. Uh, we got them at the counter if, if you get into a situation where you need one of those. Um, so all in all, faucets, yes, they are um, I was just looking at easy the questions install. rolling in. Um, so Keith, yes, they can be easy to install. Um, you will have some faucets that have your supply lines already connected. Delta does that with some of their faucets so that you don't have to get all the way up there with a wrench for the supply connections. They ran the supplies down for you to connect to the um, shutoff, uh, make it pretty easy. Um, on top of that, you will probably need a wrench. Basin wrench is handy. I've used a set of channel locks to install some, um, but it is a tight place. So if you like getting your hands on things and you don't mind contorting yourself a little bit for a second, um, absolutely you can. The faucet we have, uh, the Luxart faucet we're giving away, um, will have two supply connections and a spray hose because it does have a pull down head. That spray hose will have to be connected to another hose um, and a weight put on the hose underneath so that your supply hose that you pull down will automatically come back up. Um, not too complicated. Be glad, Keith, to walk you through it in-house. And as my wife just said, she needs a new faucet. So, Brooke, enter a question and you might win one for free. Um, awesome. So, it's a good topic. Um, yeah. Anytime you have a, you've bought a faucet, you want to buy a faucet, we have a full extensive kitchen and bath showroom downstairs that Ryan can show you faucets. Mm -hmm. um, but we will take it out of the box if you ask and break down everything you need to know on how to put that in. Sure, absolutely. Um, when installing a new kitchen faucet, if you're putting in all new um, kitchen sink, the basket that the drain, the water goes down the drain through that basket strainer that catches your food crumbs, you can stop it up. Um, we have Blake from Nashville. Hey, Blake. Um, asks, when installing a faucet drain, either on a kitchen or bathroom sink, when is it appropriate to use plumber's putty and or silicone to seal the drain? Really good question Great from question. someone in the biz. Great question. Um, I brought a little, a little show and tell uh, piece here today. Um, so, when installing a kitchen drain or a basket strainer, as we call them, um, there are a couple important things that you have to know in order for it to be installed correctly and not leak. Um, and that's what we're trying to achieve most of the time in the plumbing industry. Leaks are bad. Um, so to answer your question, Blake, um, this basket strainer has several important pieces. I won't cover all of them, I'll just get to the, the meat of it. This piece right here um, is what you see from the top. So here's your, your little strainer that catches all your food and debris. It's where the water drains down through. So this piece actually sits down from the top onto your stainless steel sink or whatever type of sink you have. Um, the important thing, and, and a lot of people don't realize this, is that this outer lip right here, hopefully you can see that well, um, requires a sealant. Um, and there, there are a couple options, and Blake mentioned both of them, uh, either plumber's putty or silicone. Uh, if you were to pull all of our different plumbers uh, here at Burleson's, you would possibly get a varied response in terms of what their preference is to use, whether plumber's putty or silicone. Both agents will work um, and they'll they'll seal and and do just fine. It really just depends on who you ask and their preference. Plumber's putty is cheap. It works very well. It holds up for a long time, um, and it's actually easy to if you need to change out your basket strainer. It's easy to get it back off. Whereas silicone sometimes can be a little uh, messier and tougher to deal with. So and one of the other advantages, plumber's putty, if you ever needed to use it down the road, usually if you keep it in a conditioned space like yeah. under the cabinet or in a um, place that's not gonna get super cold or super hot, you can use it the next time you gotta install one and you're spending about $2 for a container about this big, which I always call a lifetime supply. You probably <laughs> won't use that if you can keep it from hardening in a cold place. Um, with caulk, you don't have that. Um, it is pretty cheap for caulk as well, um, but it's almost a one and done sometimes. You guys who have used caulk know that you yeah. will probably end up 
throwing it away because it hardens up or won't quit oozing out or whatever the case may be. So that's just something else. Yeah, good point. Um, so it's very important that in, in the install process that there is some type of sealant applied in your plumber's putty or silicone. So this then sits down inside of the sink. From the underside, they provide this rubber, flat rubber washer and what's called like a friction ring. Um, Which uh, I'll interject. When I started working here, I knew nothing about plumbing. I thought this was just some packaging. <laughs> Don't throw it away. No, Ryan's about to tell you it's why. It's really important. Um, so essentially from the bottom of the sink, you want the rubber gasket to um, affix to the very bottom of the sink. So it's going to go like this. And then the purpose for the friction ring is to keep the rubber washer from binding when you start tightening um, this nut from the bottom. So that friction washer or slip ring allows uh, this cup to tighten without pinching the rubber friction, the rubber gasket and creating some kind of weird uh, bubble in it that essentially would then leak. Um, so that's the point of that. So the rubber washer goes on the bottom of the sink. Plumber's putty or silicone on the top side, rubber washer from the bottom side. That then sandwiches the sink in between here. This nut is then what is used to tighten and creates a seal. Now, when using plumber's putty or even silicone, when you begin to tighten, the what you want to see from the top side is actually plumber's putty squeeze out evenly from all sides, 360 degrees of this. And then you know that it's gotten into every crack and crevice that it needs to be in. Um, and obviously you want to tighten it to a point where the basket strainer is not loose, uh, it doesn't move, um, but it, it's very rigid inside of the sink. Um, and then from there you can attach the rest of your plumbing. And the same principle applies to a lavatory drain as well. Though it looks different, the, this, the, the way that you install it is very similar with plumber's putty. There's a gasket from the bottom side, very, very similar to this. Yeah, and um, something else to mention, a lot of you might wanna go uh, look at what you have at your house so you can see what we're talking about. Um, these basket strainers we like because they have this cup that you can use a regular size wrench on the bottom. What you um, more than likely will see is not that, is a larger um, tightening nut from the bottom that's what's historically been most popular. We like these because like I said, you can use the regular size adjustable wrench or channel lock. So there um, you have it. Blake. Good. Thank you, Blake, for your question. Um, moving on, we're, we're gonna step into uh, transition to more of the cold weather conversation since it is snowing outside. Um, I've got two questions. The first is from Penny. And she asked, what's the best way to keep an outside faucet from freezing in the winter? That is a wonderful question, Penny. Um, every year we run into situation after situation after situation where uh, either an outside faucet that's attached to your house or even so, in some cases like a yard hydrant um, is has froze and busted. Uh, number one reason for that is leaving your hose attached to the faucet. Actually, while I'm saying this, I'm thinking to myself, right now, my hose is attached to my outside faucet. Picked a good Fantastic. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, broke my own rule. Um, so with, with, any, with any outside faucet, it is very bad for business to leave your hose attached to the faucet. Um, so first thing you wanna do as you're kind of getting things ready for winter is make sure to unhook unhook your hose from your outside spigot. Um, as with anything else, I've got kind of an example here today. Uh, this is a wall faucet, wall hydrant. They have a lot of different names in our industry, but uh, in essence, this is what one looks like. Um, this is the part here that you would see from the outside of your house. The rest of this is what actually goes through the wall into a basement or a crawl space or wherever it's attaching to the plumbing. Um, the important thing is, like with many things, installation is key. 
Um, and so, you know, it's really easy to look at that and say, that's real simple. You just drill a hole, stick it through the wall, bada bing, bada boom. Uh, well, not necessarily. Um, this uh, design by Woodford is considered to be freezeless, but there are stipulations that come along with that. One of the big ones is don't leave your hose attached. Uh, the second is when it's installed, it needs to have a little bit of downward pitch back towards the actual spigot. Um, the reason for that is, is, and the reason why they're able to achieve uh, this being a freezeless device is because back here is where the control is for water coming into and, and being able to be stopped. So in order for it to, to not freeze, uh, you need to have a little pitch here so it allows any residual water to drain back and out of the spigot. Um, so as long as it's installed properly and you don't leave your hose connected like I have done, um, then this thing for many years will remain freezeless. Um, so that's really important. It's a great question. One other thing that you can do, and this is kind of an added protection, is they make these cute little guys here. Um, and this is made to go over the end of your faucet, essentially. And it kind of, if you can imagine, just protects and provides some insulation over the end of it. Um, now, I will say this, not every wall faucet or wall hydrant is freezeless. Um, there have been, and especially older ones, uh, that are not designed like this. So if you have an older one that has been on the home for a long time, you definitely would want to consider using something like this. Um, and they're very inexpensive. We sell them for $2.05. We keep them in stock here at Burleson's. And so uh, if that's you, I would suggest swinging by and grabbing one of these um, soon because it's, it's getting cold quickly. Just so you know how to install, there's a little loop here at the bottom. I think you can see it. It just wraps around the handle or the spigot itself at the end. Yeah. And then when you have it on the wall, there is a pull cord and a little lock. Works very simply. And as soon as you tighten that down, it's it's there to stay through the winter until yes. warm weather rolls back through. So um, some of you might want to come get those uh, with the weather we've got com coming up for the weekend. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, last question. And... It's a good one, also related to the weather outside, and that comes from Christina, and she asks, is heat tape for your pipes worth it? Hmm. Um, good question. We get this extremely often, especially around this time of year. I brought uh, the container of heat tape up here because I usually walk through this with any person who asks this question um, as they come in the counter. Um, heat tape is a good tool to use um, when you're in a pinch with frozen pipes, I'll say that. What I always tell people is there is pretty high risk for heat tape. The risk being that that heat tape has the possibility of melting a pipe, sure. doing damage to a pipe in some way. That's your risk. Um, the owner's manual, which we talk about manuals for um, pipe, a lot of us men choose to throw these away. I would not. Very specific instructions. Um, one being it needs to lay uh, flat along the top of the pipe. A lot of people don't know that. They wrap it around in a circle. That's not what you want. You want it spread evenly across the pipe. Number two, it has a built-in thermostat, so it's reading a temperature once it gets below, yes. I believe, 34. It kicks on. Um, and lastly, it talks about wrapping it in some sort of uh, fire retardant insulation, which is important as well. Um, with that... I would leave it up to you guys to read through warnings and such to see if it is worth it to you. The advice that, that I always give is, and me and, me and Ryan talked about this, the heat tape concept is more of a band-aid for an issue that probably yes. needs to be permanently fixed. Absolutely. Um, heat tape can fail. It's an electrical circuit. Uh, if your power goes out, which when it's really bad weather, a lot of times that's what's going to happen. You've got yeah. a power outage. It's not going to work. You're still going to have frozen pipes. Um, insulating a basement, closing the vents in your crawl space or basement, um, things like that. Insulating the pipes, making sure that everything is tight during the winter um, to prevent that airflow 
is usually the most common thing that we can say will be a more permanent fix. Um, and just burying your pipes where they need to be buried below the frost line, which um, most people say 12 to 18 inches. And sometimes I've seen it deeper than that here in the cold North Carolina mountains. Um, just making sure that you bury it below 18 inches and uh, coming into the house. And then once it gets into the house, making sure you're well insulated or in a heated space. Um, that can be done. It takes a little more work. A lot of times people uh, maybe can't afford that type of work. Um, that's when they choose to go with a heat tape. Yeah. You're looking at anywhere from 30 to $50, depending on what length of heat tape, which we've got three feet, six, nine, 12, 15, all the way up to 30. Um, so there's options. Uh, I would say that a lot of people do it, so it must work. Um, for me, I would like to, in my home, to try to fix the bigger issue. Yeah. Uh, but I am in the plumbing industry and kind of see that big picture. So um, I will leave that up to you, but it is a really good question by Christina. Um, yes. Thank you, Christina. If you have a an immediate freezing problem and you're worried about it, um, I would I would recommend looking into heat tape, yes. Um, that is all five questions for the day. Boom, boom, boom. Um, fantastic questions. I'm really enjoying seeing the questions roll in. A lot of them are things that we didn't think about talking in videos. Sure. Um, and you may ask, you know, what, what do I get for asking these questions? If you haven't been keeping up with what we're doing here, um, I'm trying to entice everyone to get into asking questions. So I'd like for you to go to burlsonplumbing.com slash QA for question answer and submit questions. Every question you submit will count um, towards you being entered. You get entered every time for every question to winning a faucet, Luxart kitchen faucet. Very nice faucet, stainless yeah, steel, nice. pull down spray. And you can come see it. We have it on display. And um, the other thing is a Wi Fi thermostat by Honeywell. You can win that. Um, cool. And if you know how to install one, uh, that's great. Or if not, we can do the service call to come install it for you. Um, also, we'll give away a couple of Orca chasers, which Ryan's drinking coffee out of his this morning. Yeah. Um, and the last thing I do I do want to mention was these I mentioned earlier. Um, I didn't tell you they were on sale, but they are. They are on sale. Um, Fifteen ninety nine. I forgot to mention that. So great stocking stuffer. Yes, absolutely. My wife has the Sea Breeze, I believe it is, oh, or yeah. Sea Foam. Um, and there's bright pink, a lot, navy of, a lot blue. of awesome colors. Absolutely, there really is a good variety. Um, that is all I think we have for today. So this was episode one of our morning show Q and A. I think it went well. Um, me and Ryan will probably watch the video ourselves about three or four times, like we did yesterday. And then to, I'll go cry <laughs> <laughs> to see how poorly we did. Um, I do, I would like to get more people pushing that little button because it just, I mean, it warms our heart when we see a like button oh, and the love. heart button. Um, no angry faces though. No, Please. somebody no yesterday, did you see somebody yesterday? Did they About every five you? seconds we're hitting the angry button. I don't know what we're doing to make you angry, but I apologize. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and if, if you got some suggestions. There for, we go. Yeah, there there it like, is. Yeah. Um, if you got suggestions as to why we're making you mad, we'll try to fix something. Uh, yesterday it might have been that I said, um, 3,000 times, so I'm trying to catch myself on that as well. Um, dang it. Did it again. <laughs> <laughs> we will wrap up the show today. Like I said, we're here at Burleson Plumbing all day today. If you don't have much to do on this snowy day, come see us. Yeah, come visit us. Have a free cup of coffee and check out our us. new counter area if you haven't already seen Absolutely. it. Absolutely. It's a new layout, new design. Um, 20 percent more items and a lot of Christmas sale items on sale. Some of them are getting low, so make sure you jump in and, and see what we have on sale. You can go to our website to see what's on sale as well, uh, burlsonplumbing.com slash shop. I think we should address this last question by Michael. Uh, is that a picture of Randy Travis in the background? Oh, no. Are you talking, and you can comment, are you talking over here or somewhere in here? If it's over here, that is... Uh, Dean Smith and Roy Williams poster talking about legends, big Carolina Tar Heel basketball fan. And this is Yosef the Mountaineer up beside behind Ryan's head. Don't think you're talking about him. He kind of looks like a Randy Travis. 
And up here is just a picture of me and a friend running. He definitely looks like Randy Travis. More of a... You should hear him sing. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that answers your question, though. <laughs> uh, we'll look through the other questions, and we will comment on those after we get done yeah. with the video. And I hope uh, everyone enjoyed the information. Please go ask more questions because we look forward to answering everything you have. Absolutely. Like our page on Facebook if you would. That would be awesome. We encourage comments, questions. Yes all of that interaction. Thank you guys for joining us today. Thank you so much. We'll see you next Friday at 9 a.m.